the question I have for you, Ron, is, you know, we saw Urias in game two. We saw Scherzer close out the Giants and in that fifth game. And the the reasoning we're hearing about them, be, it's been fine to use them in those situations as opposed to just resting them fully for starting is it was their throw day anyway. And now we've subsequently heard Scherzer say his arm was dead and we watched a 20-game winner in Julio Urias get cuffed around in a playoff game. Is this mismanagement or just unlucky, Ron? Um, mismanagement. And, uh, and, and I usually don't say things like that. Um, but, you know, I, I think around baseball, uh, the intelligentsia uh, that run the game now believe, like, believe that they have all the answers. And they have more answers than, than certainly the people uh, who ran teams when I played. But what you did in this postseason, if you're a Dodger fan and if you follow the Dodgers, is that you pitched Walker Bueller on three days rest. He's never done that before. You closed with Max Scherzer in game five against San Francisco, and you started him in game one. And then you pitched a 25-year-old left-hander who's had shoulder issues before four times in 11 days. I don't know how you explain that any other way. Um, you know, I, I th I'm sure they will find the words and they will find reasoning to be able to explain that away. Um, but for people who follow the game, love the game as I do, um, uh, I think they'll come up short, for me anyway. I mean, that is not mincing any words right there. Is it just the general sense of, okay, this is the way it works on paper and it should work regardless because the numbers match up? Uh, I'm uh, honestly, I mean, we're talking about smart people that would that would know what you just said um, could lead to danger, uh, especially since I, you, you've set it up properly. You got the arms, the starters that that is the envy of the rest of Major League Baseball, the Dodgers. Yeah, I, you know, you know, Rich, I, I, I think that once you get this close, um, it, it's really difficult to not take your shot with your best players, right? So, you know, you have a roster of twenty six guys. There's really only about 15 that you want to play. You know, the rest of the guys you will play, but there's 15 pitchers and, and hitters that you really want want to play because they're your best players. So what do you want to do in the postseason? You want to make sure that your best players are on the field for the significant part of the innings of those games. I totally understand that. That's been done since the beginning of time. That's 100 percent but you know at, at, at some point um you know you're you're talking about a ball club that is one of the greatest ball clubs of the last 10 years that is in a position in a game five scenario where they don't have a, a person to start the game mm. um to me that's um to me that's inexcusable i'm sure that um, people will find uh you know, bullpen games and all those things that have become a trend, uh, especially with small market teams. But to have the mighty Dodgers uh, come into a game five situation and not have a starting pitcher of some renown. Now, it's not all their fault. I mean, Clayton Kershaw got hurt. Um, you know, you had to go through uh, uh, the legality issues of Trevor Bauer, who they signed. Um, I get it. But, um, you know, they retooled with Scherzer to replace Kershaw. Uh, but they didn't retool one more person to to present and pitch and start a game five. The Atlanta Braves, on the other hand, lost one of the top five players in the game, and they retooled them with Rosario and Duvall and Soler. Um, so, you know, that I think that's really the storyline for me uh, with the series. My final take, Rich, on on the the Dodgers and and the Atlanta Braves. Yes. Atlanta has to win tonight because if they don't win tonight, all those things I said about pitching on short rests and uh, uh, Urias on four times in 11 days, all of that stuff goes out the window because if they don't win tonight, they go to Atlanta and they, the Dodgers will pitch Scherzer and Bueller on proper rest. That changes 
everything. So um, if they don't win tonight, uh, the Dodgers have a beautiful peak into coming mm-hmm. back for the second time in a row. And they also have the uh-oh, not again factor working in their favor, yeah. right? Ex- exactly. A team that would get tight uh, thinking mm-hmm. about, oh, no, this is happening again. Mm-hmm. And Atlanta certainly, in their history, their great history of great um, great teams, uh, have had that more than they, they would like. Did you get that democracy line from Seinfeld? Because he used that on us once, the democracy of talent and physique. Did he drop that line on the booth uh, on, uh, uh, on broadcast uh, he, with he, you once? He, he didn't, but uh, to even think <laughs> that I could use the same world, uh, same words as the great Seinfeld uh, is is – I'm, I'm pretty lucky. He's, I'm telling you, Ron, he said that to us, and I, I wrote it down, and we keep repeating it ever since he appeared on the show three years ago. He said that's the beauty of baseball, the democracy of talent and physique. Now, he said that in saying that pitchers should still bat, then get rid of the designated oh, okay, hitter. Okay. So we almost <laughs> came to blows over that. But <laughs> you know, I, my, my favorite Seinfeld is when he said, instead of raising the stamp two or three cents, Raise it by a dollar and let those guys get a long pants. That to me is the same pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure Keith is still dining out being on Seinfeld, I'm sure, today. Even I, right I, now. L- listen, I, I don't even know what he gets uh, monthly, a check from yes. there. But uh, my, my beautiful friend turned 68 years old yesterday. Is that right? Keith Hernandez. He is, uh, Ron, people don't kn- know, I don't think, you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he was one of the greatest baseball players ever. I, I, I played with Conseco, Ricky Henderson, mm-hmm. Mark McGuire, Carney Lansford, Daryl Strawberry, Dwight Gooden. I can go on and on. Yes. Keith Hernandez is the greatest baseball player that I ever played. With. No kidding. Well, I mean, because yeah. he could do it all. I mean, the fielding as well, for sure. Yeah, the right? fielding, and he also had... He had a feel for the game that we all aspire to, but very few uh, approach. Yeah. And Gary Carter, too. That's another name that you could throw into that mix, too. Right I mean, now. at some point, you know, when, when people talk about that 86 team, I always say one thing. We had the best right fielder, catcher, first baseman, starting pitcher, and Gooden. And, uh, and Kevin Mitchell, a, f- a future MVP, uh, couldn't make that lineup. That's right. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.